Good morning. It's Tuesday, the 19th of February, 2013. Here's the news it's worth talking about in Panama today. Leading off with one that makes me happy. This is in Mediario.com and in several other newspapers. The Metro Bus Company, Me, me Boost or whatever it's called, they fired this guy named Inocente Guerra. He was the guy that led the strike against the Metro bus in December and January. You remember this a couple of months ago? All right, here's the kicker on this one. First of all, these people do not have a union, okay? If you don't, there are laws in Panama regarding what you can do with regards to a strike and not going to work and doing a work stoppage. One of these things is you have to have a union and your union has to have a collective bargaining agreement. I mean, you just can't go, I'm not going to work. You need to give me more money, which is what these idiots did, okay? Now, the Metro bus company hired the drivers, and if you're driving a bus and you don't like how much money you're getting paid, go work for a different company who will pay you more money, okay? For some reason, this idiot got it into his brain that they could just, he could convince a, a very small group of drivers. I mean, it was like maybe 5% of the drivers. We're going to go on strike. No, idiot. You're fired. Get out. And that's what they did. Now it's like they fired Innocente Guerra. Is anybody surprised? Goodbye, idiot. Good, good, so long. Have a nice day. If the Metro bus drivers want to organize themselves and create a union and have elections and they elect their leaders and then they have a meeting and then they have a contract and if they want to go do all of the things that are required by law and have a strike then good luck but this idiot just to say he convinced about 30 or 40 other bus drivers to not go to work one day and we're gonna pressure these people to give us more money and you can see the other people that are standing next to him. It's like, crap, we're next. Yeah, all right. Well, go drive something else there, Mr. Inocente Guerra, because your strike didn't work, and now you're out of a friggin' job. Next thing you know, he's going to be working either for the Social Security system or he's going to be a school teacher or something because he's just another one of these guys that is a minority factor. They do not represent all of the bus drivers. There's like thousands of bus drivers, and he had like 50. Dude, shut up. Go away troublemaker and he's fired whatever it's a headline <laughs> I love it when they throw these idiots out anyway um, the next big headline today HSBC if you remember a few years ago HSBC bought a bank that was called Banismo bought up a bank Panamanian bank HSBC England company from England came into Panama and they bought Banismo and we're in the Panamanian market okay they're selling now HSBC Panama sold to a Colombian bank, Ban Colombia, for $2.1 billion. Okay. Well, I'd like to say, HSBC, screw you very much, because I had an account with Banismo. These idiots came in, bought Banismo. Then because they were doing money laundering with Mexico and Iran and stuff, they got fined by the United States $1.9 billion. When that went down, what did they do? They closed my account because I've got a U.S. passport. Thanks, you idiots. Then they turn around and sell it to, to, some other, to somebody else. <sighs> Let's just say my experience with HSBC in Panama has not been good. A lot of other people haven't really liked it either. Um, maybe now that HSBC is running away from Panama, that maybe service will be better with Ban Colombia. Once again. Goodbye. Okay, the uh, the National Assembly is in the process of debating a new law, number 559, bill number 559, with which they are going to raise taxes on liquor. Now, it's important to note that they're not going to raise taxes on beer. They're only raising taxes on liquor. They're calling this the anti-Varela law because Juan Carlos Varela owns the company that makes Seco. All right, so Seiko is going to pay more taxes now, and uh, they're in the process of pushing this through. Of course, Juan Carlos Varela doesn't like it. And then related to this, in the Panama America, the current uh, Minister of the Economy and Finance, uh, Frank DeLima, said, well, I don't really know how much money we're going to get in new taxes from this, 
probably going to be about 25 to 30 million dollars a year. Um, you could probably just figure out exactly. I mean, he says depending on what figure, what formula you use to calculate it, you know, how much alcohol is consumed, apply the tax number, and then that's how much money is going to be generated, assuming that consumption remains the same. And he says, well, we're going to be using that money for health and to fight alcoholism, and we're going to be giving it to the uh, cancer hospital and all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, they're saying, yeah, we're, we're putting this tax on, on liquor. And, but, and, and he says, oh, and the guy who really doesn't like it is Vice President Juan Carlos Varela. Yeah, well, here comes that. Okay, um, Chelo, uh, Sergio Galvez, who's the president of the National Assembly, was planning to run for the position of mayor of Panama City. Okay, now, Ferofino, who was the minister of... I know you need a program to keep track of these guys. Ferofino was the minister of um, uh, social. Basically, his job was to hand out money. Um, well, he said that he's not going to run for president anymore, and he's going to run for mayor. Well, Sadiho was going to run for mayor, but now he's going to step out, and he's just going to be running for his uh, his job to remain in the National Assembly. And... Um, they have a list of people here who are going to take a shot to be mayor, including uh, Jose Isabel Blandon. He has no chance because he's going to get fried on legal and political matters. Um, Ana Perez, who is post, who, who's going as an independent. Uh, Roberto Bobby Velasquez, who ran last time from the PRD. Balbina Herrera, they're also PRD, so they're going to be doing an internal primary election. And then uh, Jose Luis Fabrica. Um, they didn't mention the current mayor, uh, Roxana Mendez. Now, I asked her myself, and she says, Yeah, I'm going to run. So there's going to be an internal fight between her and Fedofino over that job. Um, and uh, we'll see who ends up being it. But anyway, Galvez has dropped out. Uh, and then when this whole conversation comes up, the guy who's the current president of the of the municipal city council, um, Javier Ortega, Ortega, he says, you know, when all this is said and done, Fedofino is going to end up running as a representative for like a Corredoria, just like a local representative on the city council. Because um, it's like from president to running for mayor and then dog catcher. I mean, that was kind of like his attitude in this statement. Um, okay. Along these lines, because there's right now all this political stuff, everybody's kind of jockeying for position to figure out what they're going to do for the 2014 election because the primaries are coming up and everybody's got to get, you know, you got to like, you know, line up your campaign. Um, one of the guys who quit, resigned, was the Minister of Housing, Jose Domingo Arias. He bailed and he's like, I'm going to dedicate myself to running for president for the Cambio Democratico Party. Okay. His deputy minister, and her name is Yasmina. Delce Pimentel. Okay, she was the Deputy Minister of Housing. She has now been bumped up, and she's now the new Minister of Housing. I'm sure you're glad to know that. But anyway, there it is. New Minister, Cabinet change. It's important. Okay, a uh, little bit of crime and violence here. There was 18 kilos of cocaine seized in a residence. Um, this is going to be one of these. They found a 9 millimeter pistol, $800 in cash. They arrested two dudes and a woman. Okay, now there was also and this is in a, this was in the Via Mediterraneo in Juan Diaz. There was another bust um, in an apartment on Via Veneto on Saturday, also 18 kilos. And there, the, there's indications in this article that they're talking about intelligence operations. So it's kind of like one leads to the other. That's kind of the indication. It's in the article. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but you know that's. The, the drug traffickers get the drugs and then, you know, it's 18 kilos. Doesn't, in, in Panama terms, that's chicken shit because it's, you know, you're talking three, four, five, six hundred kilos. But you're getting more and more busts with smaller numbers like this. This is kind of a, these trends of what the different things that drug traffickers are doing show up in the news. Okay, and then the last thing today in the Siglo, there was a, this is stupid, there was a fire up in uh, Penanol May. And the firemen show up, and this guy, you know, what happens is all of the the uh, the news channels, like Channel Two, Channel Thirteen, there there are guys out there running around all over Panama, and they're basically freelancers. So if anything happens in Panama, 
this guy shows up and he's the cameraman for Pen for, for Telemetro, for Channel 13. So there's a fire in Penanome. So this guy shows up, he's standing in the street, public street, house on fire. Boom, starts taking video. The owner of the house, whose house t takes exception to this, grabs the guy around the neck, you know, starts doing this number, the camera falls to the ground, the cops had to intervene, the fire department guys, they had to stop putting out the fire to break up the fight. The, the, the journalist went to the hospital, the camera was damaged, and I guess the guy, the homeowner, was arrested. So your house burns down, and now you got arrested for assault and battery. Just stupid, man. You know, the guy's a journalist. He's doing his job. There's a house on fire. It's news, man. What the hell? But the rules are, if you're in public, I mean, I could take a camera right now, go on any public street, and film anything I want. If you're out in the public space, you're in public, I can film you. That's it. That's the rules. If you're in a private space, like, let's say, for example, Multiplaza. Multiplaza is... It feels like a private, like a public space, but in fact, it's a private space. It's a privately owned property. It's the same as being in somebody's house. So, if you're going to film something in a place like Multiplaza, Multicentro, something like that, you need permissions from the owners and permissions from the people involved or whatever. But if I'm standing on the street where the parking lot to go to Multicentro is, I can film all day long there. Um, anyway, just so you know, background. Those are the rules of the road as far as. Uh, uh, taking pictures and photography and filming shit uh, here in Panama. That journalist was completely within his rights, um, and any other citizen journalist or not, any dude with a film or with a with a video camera could stand there in the street and film. Yeah, period. End of story. No problem at all. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's all I got. Today is Tuesday, the nineteenth of February, twenty thirteen. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day. Bye.